Hello there, I'm the Nightmare Duke and welcome to another Fallout 76 video and today we're going to be starting off a new series. It's going to be sort of orientated and focused on uh, new players, beginner players, low level builds, that sort of stuff. So we're going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of different builds, uh, going through them, doing the build itself, showcasing it off, the armor for it, the weapons for it, the mutations for it, all that good stuff, tips and tricks, where you can take it from there sort of thing because I'm going to be sticking around level 50 for all of these. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be kicking things off with Heavy Gunner build. Uh, so if there's anything specifically you'd like to see next, then definitely let me know down in the comments. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it helps you out. If it does, then hey, consider liking and subscribing. And uh, I just realized the really creepy rat stack in the water just staring at us. But anyway, let's just get straight into things. And we're just over here at West Turk, a very foggy West Turk. Uh, just to sort of showcase the build, just so you know what to expect out of the video and what to ex sort of expect that you can be doing. Uh, following this guide and the sort of general ideas and recommendations kind of thing. Of course, we're using our one weapon here. Uh, there's two that I recommend in this video. Uh, with this being one of them. Of course, the minigun shredder. The other being... Well, I'll let you find out. But yeah, as you can see, Super Mutants, no issue here at all for us on this build at level 50 so performing really solid and handling things quite easily oh, legendary there and the last one the machine guns hurt so that's what you can kind of expect to get out of this build so yeah let's just jump straight into things and uh sort of see how to do it shall we okay and to kick things off with when it comes to the whole build and setup itself we're going to be starting off with the power armor so of course power armor because it's heavy gonna build so we're going with some power armor and we're going with the power armor you see in front of you, which is of course the excavator power armor, popular at low levels, popular at high levels, one of the most popular armors in the game uh, when it comes to power armors for very good reason. So why I use this on this build and why I'd recommend it is for the main reason being uh, your carry weight uh, goes up really, really high, which is very, very useful when you're a low level character. So as you can see right now, 375 carry weight and that is without anything on the build itself no special no cards no legendaries no nothing just the excavator power armor and that's because well one we have the both legs modded so if you mod it with the calibrated shocks you get plus 50 carry weight for each leg which gives you a hundred and then the set bonus for excavator gives you a hundred to your carry weight as well so you can get an extra 200 carry weight from your excavator power armor it comes with another bonus as well being the arms so increased mining yield when left and right arms are used in tandem so there's two bonus sets or two bonus uh, perks to the excavator set so very very popular and really really useful especially when you're a new player or a low level character and you're trying to get as much ammo as you can carry as much as sort of stuff when you're scrounging around the place and sort of looting at events and buildings and enemies and all of that stuff so excavator excavator power armor I highly recommend for your build uh, there's multiple ways that you can get it uh, one is the quest itself which is going to be minor miracles uh, and you can start that by reading any garahan excavator poster there's one over right in front of the rusty pick over in the ash heap region and there's these posters scattered all about this region as well uh, so there's multiple places that you can actually read that poster to do the quest for the excavator power armor So that's the power armor that we're going to be using for the build uh, And then of course over next would be the weapons that we're going to be using for the build So when it comes to weapons for this build, there's two that I'd recommend even though you can use whatever heavy weapon you you want to use sort of thing um, Since night of the moth update, there's now contextual ammo in the game So whatever weapon you're using especially at lower levels, there's a much higher chance uh, for that ammo type to drop for you from enemies you kill. Um, so if you're using a 50 cal, enemies have a much higher chance of dropping you 50 cal ammo. If you're using a Gatling gun, enemies will be dropping 5mm for you, so on and so forth. So ammo, especially at lower builds and for new players, is way, way easier than it used to be. But there's still two weapons that I'd recommend for this build. One of them is the minigun, specifically the minigun with the shredder mod on it. And the second one is the Gatling gun, which is this one. Uh, no specific mod for this one, but just the Gatling gun itself. 
They both use five millimeter and that's why they work great as a combo, which I'll get into now. So one of the easiest ways that people always farmed up ammo was in daily ops because well daily ops enemies drop whatever ammo you're using. Uh, now of course with a contextual ammo system in the game, uh, it's sort of affected by all enemies now, as you can see. Care of these enemies here. And they're dropping 5mm. This is of course in daily ops. So the way these two guns work really well together is, well, the Shredder doesn't use any ammo, which makes it great for new players, low-level players, when you're trying to save ammo and just getting into the game, uh, because you're just shredding enemies. Um, so then once you've gone through an area um, and you've sort of cleared it out, uh, then you can sort of just go and pick up all the ammo. And because the Gatling gun also uses 5mm, when you swap to your Gatling gun, then you have ammo for your Gatling gun. So they work and combo really well together that the minigun shredder is sort of the one generating the ammo. So once you're done, you just pick it all up, stash it, and then your Gatling gun has ammo and you didn't spend any ammo with your minigun shredder. Um, so it just combos really, really nicely together since they're both using the same ammo. So really easy to farm ammo in daily ops, really easy to farm ammo from enemies now with the contextual system for the normal non-daily ops enemies. Uh, so it just works really well together. And of course the build itself. So first things first, like I said, this is a level 50 build. So we are sticking at level 50 and the mutations for the build, I just literally popped all the serums for it. So we won't have any more negative effects for at least 46 minutes, but that doesn't really matter. The mutations for the build will be adrenal reaction, bird bones, eagle eyes, egghead, marsupial, scaly skin, and speed demon. A lot of people just rock all the mutations, maybe besides one or two because they counteract each other sort of thing. These are the ones I generally rock on all of my characters. Just a nice little setup of mutations, at least in my opinion. Uh, so those are the ones that we're going for with this build. So level 50, and as you can see, literally completely unallocated build at the moment. So again, no special, no perk cards, no legendaries, no nothing at the moment. I haven't even opened the perk card packs that I got while I leveled this character up. So we're just going to quickly be doing the build itself sort of thing. I'll just quickly put it together and then come back to you. Uh, and of course, this is a build based off of level 50. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these punch card machines, if you didn't know, you can freely swap around your special stats as much as you want. So don't waste your levels on uh, changing your special around. Always just choose per cards themselves. After level 25, you can freely use these machines. Uh, so... Uh, there's also per cards that are only available at a certain level. So there's only per cards that become available at like level 50. So technically for an ideal build, you want to be above 50, of course. Um, but this is going to be a build based on what per cards I can choose up to level 50. But I will put a sort of picture of a more ideal build, uh, which will probably be around level 56, 59, somewhere around there. But this build will be based off what I can choose and pick. Uh, up to level 50 so let's just get straight into that okay and here is the completed build based on of course level 50 and the cards that you can basically choose up into level 50 uh, so as you can see 13 in strength 1 in perception 3 in endurance 7 in charisma 12 in intelligence 6 in agility and 14 in luck now there are some things missing like charisma i've only used up five so there's two you know spots available there um, in strength, I've only used up 12, so there's one available there, and that's what I was talking about, whereas the sort of progression going forward. Um, so for the ideal build, I'll chuck a picture of that up. Um, it would be around, I think, like level 59 or so. Um, so Tenderizer would be like maxed out, for example, at level 3, uh, so that would then fill out Charisma fully. Uh, Master Heavy Gunner is missing from strength, so that would take it then to 13, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, one more rank in Adrenaline over in Agility uh, would take it to 6 and max that one out sort of thing. Uh, so that's the sort of upgrade path that you can sort of take. Um, I haven't opened any of the card packs as well, uh, but just because I don't want to do that for the video because card packs are completely random. You could get the exact cards that, I, or that you need. Um, like I could get a Master Heavy Gunner in one of these packs and I could chuck it on the build, but they're random, so I don't want to put that in. Uh, I'd sort of just left it open with the progression in mind. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you can fill it out, you know, in those sorts of ways. Um, 
and then over in legendary you do get one unlocked at rank 50 because of the contextual ammo system in the game now i would recommend going with funky duds because that will help you out quite a bit in stuff like daily ops uh, so that's my recommendation for your first legendary perk uh, but you can also go with you know others here like the uh, special stats which are really really great um, but yeah that's sort of uh, further and further progression as you unlock them i think it's like 75 and then 100 or 150 and so on so you unlock them as you go higher and higher and my general idea for it was general just kind of maxing out as much damage as we can from those first 50 levels as well as having some nice quality of life stuff as well as some survivability so that's why we have a lot of sort of damage reduction perks like bandolier traveling pharmacy batteries included we have increases in our damage from stuff like the heavy gunner perks um tenderizer uh, bloody mess uh great perks for heavy gunners of course stabilized uh one gun army uh, of course getting our action points back uh, with action girl or boy um, for that refresh um, survivability in born survivor more damage from adrenaline uh, because of our mutations class freak and starch genes are always important uh, fireproof survivability there uh, rather cool just because uh, the greater your rads the greater your strength so it helps us give us even more carry weight uh, concentrated fire just because well we can't have zero in perception so we need something there and then using vats you can sort of help you locate the enemies and whatnot uh but you can switch that out to something else if you want maybe uh the what's it glowing glowing something uh that helps you damage glowing enemies uh for heavy gunner there's not really much in perception that's useful for heavy gunner specifically uh power smith for modding our power armor uh scrapper to get more scrap gunsmith for our weapons so it's just and then also lone wanderer if you're rocking alone then go for lone wanderer if you're not then go for inspirational if you're sort of on teams all the time because you will get more xp there uh so yeah sort of just generalized damage build survivability some quality of life stuff thrown in there and uh yeah that's the build so uh let's just test it out now shall we and then just to close off things with some more sort of showcasing and sort of just to get into the legendary stuff a little bit uh when it comes to the minigun if you can get a vampires or anti-armor that'll be great but the main thing to focus on would be bashing damage increase by 50 percent because that directly affects the shredder uh, and if you go for a vampires one uh, it'll be very hard for something to kill you this will keep you alive in pretty much all situations um so vampires or anti-armor with the bashing damage will be really really great when it comes to the gatling gun uh, something like an executioners uh, will be really really good uh anti-armor again faster fire rate or 25 percent damage while aiming will also be great there so let's just deal with these super mutants with the vampires minigun and see how it absolutely annihilates everything in its path so really really great performing gun especially since you don't you don't have to worry about any ammo it's vampires they're not gonna die basically you don't have to worry about stim packs or anything like that um yeah just having a really great time uh, so yeah even at lower levels like 50 and limited on the perk cards and legendary stuff uh no, still performing absolutely fine dealing with everything in your path no problem um and then of course swapping over to the gatling gun just to showcase that off a bit as well and gatling gun 500 in the mag when you sort of increase or get the extra large magazine size 250 regular uh, but slow firing but hits like a tank so really great pairing with the minigun and you'll be having no problem with the super mutants or anything either really economic on the ammo and uh, you don't have to worry about the ammo because of the minigun so works really great as that combo pair like i said um and yeah you can use any other guns you want as well if you want to go to the 50 cal or anything like that uh it will work on this build no problem uh so yeah really really happy with how it turned out solid uh even at level 50 dealing with things absolutely no problem no issues um i'll go find a sort of uh, bigger target and deal with that as well and of course our behemoth buddy because well we can't do a video without our behemoth buddy uh, so we'll just quickly deal with him and we've got our minigun here with us so even at the bigger targets like your sort of mini bosses uh will be no problem at all and let's see 
and behemoth gun as well again minigun freighter really really strong really really okay flatwoods monster and for our gatling gun we'll just deal with a death claw who should pose no problem for our gatling gun as well assuming the death claw wants to show up there we go nice and death claw dealt with as well so again behemoths death claws any enemies and hey we leveled up so it's a nice way to end things off uh really really solid build so let's just wrap things up so there you go folks there's a lot of stuff to get into when it comes to builds and sort of tips and tricks and what to do and what not to do and what routes to take there, there's many uh but hopefully that helped you out in some way even if it helped just one person out there uh, i don't want this stuff to sort of run on too long so don't want to go into too much detail kind of thing uh, but yeah hopefully you enjoyed if you did then hey consider liking and subscribing like i said i want to turn this into a series so i'll have stuff like commando coming up rifleman melee all of that stuff uh but yeah hopefully you enjoyed thanks so much for watching and i shall see you in the next one